Hello there. This story starts on the 2nd of August 2021. At approximately 8 o'clock in the morning, I was just proceeding to open up my property when a van pulled up, parked across my drive. My first reaction was that it was the delivery driver, and as is my practice, I set off from my front door up to the gate to collect the parcel. This saves the driver walking down and gives me some exercise. But as I approach this thug, and I use the term thug advisory, it turns out he's wearing a stab proof vest, dressed all in black, with tattoos all up his arms, and to put it closely, built by the proverbial brick mill. He then starts to tell me that he's looking for somebody who's no longer resident. The problem with this is he has no ID, no badge, no identification, no court papers. But as soon as I tell him that the person he's looking for left two years ago, after the first COVID, he refused to leave. He then went on and demanded, with severe intimidation, proof that I own my car. At this point, he's getting in a little bit of a stressful situation. I'm a disabled pensioner with the only use of one arm, and at that time, so soon after the operation, I had been advised not to lift anything more than a cup of tea with my right arm. So you can imagine somebody standing six, six foot two, 17 stone, was in a scenario where the terror was setting in, realizing that I could not defend myself in any way. He then showed me what he purported to be a, court, a high court order, claiming to be a high court bailiff. Now from my past experience, I know High Court bailiffs have to carry a visible ID, but no, he hasn't got one. He's just a thug with a stab proof vest on, blocking my drive. So we try and do what we do normally when people are unpleasant and intimidating, try and talk our way through it. But this guy was having nothing of it. He continued to enter my property and demanded with menaces that he was going to take the big van, get the big van down and strip my property of goods for a, an alleged debt. He wouldn't show me the paperwork because it was GDPR. And it went on to, so we had to show him the council tax papers, which we did behind locked doors. We locked him out and showed him the, our council tax papers through the window. This still wasn't good enough. So we called the police at 20 past eight and he continued to try and go through open doors in my property looking into our greenhouse, trying to enter my workshop. I'm retired, pensioner. And then he tried taking photographs through the windows of my workshop, smiling and thinking he's doing a wonderful job. Great, you know, aggravated trespass as it happens. So what's the reaction of the thug when he's estimated the time the police arrive, this cowardly thug has run away. So I have still not seen any court order. Don't know which court he's referring to. I don't know the court case number because he refused to show it to me. The police have, have sent an officer around 
In case of breach of the peace. Yes, breach of the peace. Just think on that. This thug has refused to leave my property for over 80 minutes. And all I can do is shout at him to get off my property. And he refuses to leave. 80 minutes of terror. The following videos after this one has been published is going to go and initially we will deal with how the data commissioner considers that our data can be given away because it's Experian has conned them into taking the data. The company he turned out to work for, DCBL, employ thugs and then turn out to be thugs themselves. We then look at the way the police handle this situation. And we then look at the data commissioner, Experian, who gave wrong data away to this thug company and every other organisation which should, by rights, protect people. And then worst of all, we have Surrey Police. There is roughly nine crimes committed by this thug. Nine breaches of the criminal law. And as soon as they heard it was a bailiff who simply told them on the phone he was a bailiff when she, when the operator had clearly been told that I did not believe he was a bailiff because he refused to identify himself with correct court papers and correct identification they said it was a civil matter how can this be section 137 of the, of the Road Traffic Act is obstruction of the public highway, an offence arrestable without warrant. Misfeasance is when an, when an official applies a claim to his position which he doesn't belong. This thug turned out to be a county court bailiff not a High Court Enforcement Officer, because there was no High Court Bailiff accompanying him. Therefore he committed misfeasance. We then move on to fraud. He used a piece of paper generated by his company to show he had authority to be on my property, attempt to break in, but he had no court order with my address on it. He had no court case number with my address on it. He had no document with my name on it. He had no paperwork for my partner's name on it. So that was fraud, which is a criminal offence. His attempt to take property from me under the guise of being a High Court Enforcement Officer, which he was not, comes under the theft and burglary criteria in respect of the time he arrived when this matter went to Worcester County Court he claimed he arrived at 9.45 the police arrived at 9.30 and he had already left albeit 80 minutes after he arrived at 8 o'clock so therefore he had committed perjury So where are we? Why is this company and bailiffs in general allowed to break the law? Re I will be going through each individual statute. I'm not a judge. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a barrister. But I can read the statute. So I'm afraid the next series of videos I'll be going through each of the laws that was broken that day and what happened before and what happened after. 
because we're not talking about the person in debt, we're talking about a thug invading a debt-free home. Thank you for listening and please follow on with the next videos.